Theodore and Hank had just finished working for the day. They were on their way home to the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock. The two had been doing many difficult pushing jobs lately, and everyone thought they were becoming very useful tugboats. I could tell because everyone in the harbor had a special greeting for them as they passed by. This is the nicest place in the whole world, Theodore called out to the sea and sky. And then he continued along, listening to all the sounds coming from around the bustling harbor. Twelve. What was that, thought Theodore. Thirteen. It was Hank. He was so loud that even sleepy old Benjamin Bridge looked up in surprise. Twelve and thirteen what, Hank? asked Theodore. Oh, said Hank. Thirteen rocks covered with seaweed. <laughs> Great, Hank, said Theodore. And he turned to continue on back to the Great Ocean Dock. But quickly, Hank was right alongside. Theodore, wait, Theodore. Let's see who can be first to Cobbequid Cove. Now, Theodore did like going to Cobbequid Cove, deep in the harbor. The water was warmer there and was always so nice and peaceful. But it wouldn't be very peaceful with Hank's loud rock counting. And he also knew they were supposed to be back before dark. Come on, Theodore, said Hank. Hank kept charging ahead and then idling his engine to slow down until Theodore caught up with him. It'll only take 18 minutes, he added, trying to use his most convincing voice. Okay, replied Theodore at last. 18 minutes. Theodore knew that would leave enough time to get back to their dock before dark. And with that, the two tugs revved their engines and turned toward Cobbequid Cove. This'll be great, called Hank. Is 18 minutes a long time, Theodore? He said. Well, wouldn't you know, speedy Hank got to Cobbequid Cove first. By the time Theodore arrived, he knew they had been away for much longer than 18 minutes. Hank was nowhere to be seen. Theodore knew he should be getting back to the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company. But he also knew he couldn't just leave his friend out there all by himself. What if Hank was in trouble? But then, they'd both be in trouble if they weren't home soon. Well, what should he do? Theodore turned his engine off. So he could listen even more carefully than before. He began drifting on the tide and saw he was heading towards the entrance to a dark cove. A cove he'd never been in before. There was a scary old rusty wreck floating nearby. And big trees all around, growing out of high, sharp-looking rocks. It seemed more like a cave than a cove. Oh, who's, who's there? said Theodore softly. But there was no reply. The sun almost disappeared from the sky. And with the high rocky walls of the cove, it was quite dark indeed. It grew quieter. Very quiet and still. The only sound was the water lapping up against the rocks. Theodore was now deep inside the cove. The dark and scary cove. Theodore couldn't see Hank anywhere, and he couldn't hear him either. Hank? Hank! He whispered, but there was no reply. This is the worst place in the whole world! He yelled as loud as he could, but no one could hear him. And that made him feel even worse. His eyes followed the path of his light shining on the rocks. He saw a large, dark shape in the water just ahead. It looked just like a crocodile. Theodore gasped and he backed away with all his might. No, he cried. Uh, 111, uh, 12, uh, 11, up. Uh. It was Hank, and Theodore had backed right into him. Hank, said Theodore, amazed. Where have you been? Theodore was still shaking inside. Oh, hi, Theodore, replied Hank with a smile. Uh, I've been counting rocks. There are lots of rocks in here. Well, 
Theodore didn't know what to do first, feel happy that he hadn't hit a rock, or angry that what he thought was the rock was really Hank. But before he could decide, something really scary happened. It was the scariest sound those two tugboats had ever heard. They revved their engines so fast they almost slipped it right up into the water. Let's get out of here, Theodore, shouted Hank. Follow me, Hank, yelled Theodore. The two zigged and zagged as fast as they could away from that sound. They were both heading for the narrow channel. They were going at top speed away from whatever that awful thing was in the dark and scary cove. They were going as fast as they could, and that rattled Hank's lifeboat free from its place. Off it fell, right into the water. But neither tugboat noticed. The next morning was sunny and delightful, all right. But not for our friends Theodore and Hank. Theodore's night had been filled with bad dreams about the dark and scary cove. And especially about the awful sound. And as for Hank, well, the dispatcher was being very stern with him. And finally, Hank, he was saying, any tugboat without a lifeboat cannot do any work for this company. Until you find your lifeboat, Hank, you are to stay here in your dock. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Dispatcher, sir, answered Hank in a very small voice. Theodore Tugboat, called the dispatcher. Yes, sir, answered Theodore quickly. You will work double duty today, said the dispatcher, and every day until Hank's lifeboat is found. You will start with George. Meet him at Cobbaquid Light. Proceed immediately. That is all. The dispatcher watched Theodore move away from his dock. And Theodore, he called. Don't be late again like yesterday, or else you will remain in your dock as well. I'll remember, Mr. Dispatcher, sir, replied Theodore very seriously. Hank remained silent. He was very sad about having to stay in his dock. Theodore felt sad about his friend, too. But he felt worse about going to Cobbaquid Light. That awful sound was still ringing in his head, and Cobbaquid Light was right outside the dark and scary cove. When Theodore arrived at Cobbaquid Light, George had already buttoned onto the cargo ship. Sure enough, the ship was anchored right in front of the dark and scary cove. Theodore ducked behind it so that he wouldn't have to look into the cove. Should I button on? Theodore called to George. He was trying his best not to think about how close he was to the cove. George puffed smoke from his stack and then called back. There's no cargo aboard. I can get this ship to its new dock in no time, all by myself. Hooray, shouted Theodore. I mean, okay. He was very relieved. Now we could get away from there even sooner. Theodore. It was Pearl, the pilot boat, and her voice was coming from inside the dark and scary cove. Theodore, can you hear me? called Pearl impatiently. I need you in here right away. Oh no, thought Theodore. Theodore gathered all his courage and entered the dark and scary cove. He looked around very carefully, trembling inside. He started to remember some of the rocks in the water he had seen the night before, and the trees and the frightening shadows. But somehow, today, with the bright sun overhead, they didn't look quite so scary. Pearl was waiting for Theodore a little ways into the cove. Theodore realized that she was right beside the place where he thought he'd seen the crocodile. Pearl, cried Theodore, about to warn her when he saw a big tree that had fallen into the cove. It was floating in the very place he'd seen the crocodile, but it wasn't there this morning. There was just this giant tree. Yes, Theodore, said Pearl. What were you gonna tell me? Oh, uh, nothing, replied Theodore, quite puzzled. And then Pearl said, this tree could be dangerous for any small boats who come into this cove. Since you're not needed for the cargo ship, Please, tow it away. And remember, I know, Theodore said before Pearl could finish, don't be late. And then Pearl went off, leaving Theodore all by himself. 
Theodore quickly tied his tow rope onto the tree and began to move out of the cove. He was very glad to be leaving. And that was when he saw it. Hank's lifeboat. Hank's gonna like seeing you, he said to the lifeboat. But just as Theodore was about to get the lifeboat, it was the scary sound again. And this time, it seemed to be coming from Hank's lifeboat. Theodore was about to race away when he remembered Hank's sad face that morning when the dispatcher had told him to stay in his dock. He had to get that lifeboat. But then he also remembered the dispatcher's warning. Don't be late. He had to get back to his dock and out of the dark and scary cove as fast as he could. Hank's rowboat would just have to wait. Anyway, he was already towing the giant tree. And that would slow him down. The tree, thought Theodore. That tree hadn't really been a crocodile after all. And then he wondered if just maybe the scary sound wasn't really anything awful either. What was that? Theodore was sure he saw something. He moved closer. Closer. It was a bullfrog. A tiny bullfrog was making that big, huge sound. Imagine. Hello, little frog, called Theodore to the bullfrog. And the bullfrog answered back with another one of his croaks. Wait till Hank hears about you, said Theodore. And then he laughed and laughed. In fact, you could hear Theodore laughing all the way home to his dock.